Hello, I'm Dr. Olaf Andersen in the Department of Physiology and Biophysics at Weill Cornell Medical College in New York City. Hello, I'm Ruchi Kapoor, an MD-PhD student in Dr. Olaf Andersen's lab. Hello, my name is John Kim, I'm a research technician. Today we will show you how to prepare for single channel experiments in planar lipid bilayers. We will show you how to prepare the chamber and we will show you how to prepare the bilayer punch electrodes we use to isolate the small areas of membrane where we do the measurements. So let's get started. Our electrophysiological setup consists of the following. An air suspended anti-vibration table to minimize mechanical vibrations a Faraday cage to shield against electrical noise, sound, and vibration, and a stand for the bilayer chamber. We use a circulating water jacket for temperature control in which the bilayer chamber is placed, and a micromanipulator to mount the head stage of the patch clamp amplifier. An electronic filter unit is used to further filter the output from the patch clamp amplifier at 500 Hz to visualize the current transitions. An oscilloscope is used for displaying the current signal, both the output from the patch clamp amplifier and from the electronic filter. Last but not least, you will need a computer with a data acquisition system that digitizes the patch clamp signal at 20 kHz. We use an in-house developed software for data recording and analysis. All of the equipment is turned on 20 minutes before beginning. Next, we will prepare the chamber where the experiments are performed. The chamber is divided into two halves by a septum, which is made of a thin Teflon sheet about 100 microns thick and filled with an electrolyte solution. We form the bilayer across the hole in the septum, which provides for connection between the electrolyte solutions. The hole should have a diameter of 1 to 1.5 millimeters. Using petroleum jelly as a sealant, place a glass window in the front half of the Teflon chamber. Thread stainless steel screws through one metal brace and the four holes in the rear chamber half. Using petroleum jelly as a sealant, place a circular Teflon partition such that it will be sandwiched between the two halves of the assembled chamber. Ensure that the hole in the partition is centered. Apply petroleum jelly on both sides of the partition to ensure that the electrolyte compartments are watertight and electrically isolated. Continue threading the screws through the front half of the chamber and the front metal brace. Tighten the assembly to ensure that all components are held firmly in place but not too tight. In order to clean the chamber and remove the petroleum jelly, a pasture pipette is fire polished and bent at a right angle. Fire polishing the pipette to a smooth tip helps avoid scratching the glass or Teflon. Next, clean the chamber with a 2 to 1 mixture of chloroform and methanol, or Fulch solution. Using the pipette, remove the excess petroleum jelly with the Fulch solution without smearing it all over the Teflon and glass. Use at least 10 volumes of Fulch. Once this is done, magnetic stir bars are added to the chambers. Then, clean the chamber with 95% ethanol, and finally, with high-purity water, either distilled water, millicue water, or equivalent. As before, you use a fire-polished pasture pipette to aspirate the liquid. Finally, repeat the cleaning with fulch, ethanol, and water. Then, water, ethanol, and fulch. Now we will make the glass electrode micropipette, which will serve as the electrical connection to the rear compartment of the chamber. Using a P97 flaming brown micropipette puller from Sutter Instruments, pull the glass capillary to make two micropipettes that each have a sharp and short taper. We use capillaries made of borosilicate glass with an external diameter of 0.8 mm and an internal diameter of 0.5 mm. The glass capillary is placed in the puller and fastened in preparation for pulling. The filament in the puller should be made of platinum, as we have not had success pulling the pipettes in electrode pullers with tungsten filaments.
The next few steps will be done in a microforge with a platinum filament. Before using the microforge, you should make sure that the filament is well coated with glass. You can either use a soft soda lime glass or a hard borosilicate glass. You will need to adjust the heat on your microforge so that the glass flows smoothly and covers the filament uniformly with a thin coat. Now, mount the micropipette in the microforge and break the tip. We do so by gently softening the glass coat on the filament at a relatively low heat. Then, you gently move the micropipette tip toward the glass coat on the filament so that the two melt together. Turn off the heat on the filament, which retracts and the pipette breaks. Now we are left with a sharp and even opening about 30 microns in diameter. Again using the microforge, create a right angle bend in the micropipette 3 to 4 millimeters from the tip. Place the pipette a few hundred microns above the filament and then turn on the heat so that the filament turns red. The filament will move due to the thermal expansion. Then, gently lower the pipette onto the filament and the filament will bend. You control the amount of bending by the heat of the filament. When the bend is about 80 degrees, you rapidly move the pipette up and forward. This requires some coordination. You want to end up with a 90 degree bend. Using the same settings, fire polish the micropipette tip. Keep the filament coated with glass. Now we silanize the pipette tip with a 10% solution of trioctyl silane in benzene. This makes the pipette surface hydrophobic so it interacts well with the membrane. Let the solution draw a few millimeters up into the pipette by capillary action. Evaporate the silane using the microforge at low heat and you are done. Now we will show you how to prepare the silver electrode. Take a 5 cm piece of silver wire about 1 mm in diameter. Roll it 3 to 4 times into a coil with an inner diameter of 2 to 3 mm. Keep the rest as a tail which will bend such that it is at a right angle to the helix. Coat the tail and the adjacent 5 to 10 mm of the silver wire with molten silver chloride. Now prepare the bilayer forming solution in our case, the lipid diolyl phosphatidylcholine in N-decane. The lipid is stored in glass tubes at minus 40 degrees Celsius as 150 microliter aliquots of lipid in chloroform. Take a glass tube from the freezer, let it come to room temperature, and evaporate the chloroform under a jet of dry nitrogen in a chemical hood. Add 50 microliters of N-decane and vortex. To have good contact between the bilayer forming solution and the Teflon surrounding the hole over which we form the bilayer, we pre-paint the Teflon partition around the hole. First, clean a fire-polished pasture pipette with fulch. Then, dip the cleaned pipette into 2.5% phospholipid in N-decane, allowing the lipid to rise about 1 mm up into the pipette. Deposit a drop of lipid as a film over the hole in the Teflon partition. Allow the lipid to dry for about 10 to 15 minutes and repeat. Hello, so today we've shown you how to prepare lipid bilayers for single channel experiments. In the accompanying video, we will show you how to isolate small patches of membrane, how to record single channel activity, how to modify activity with small molecules, and how to analyze the results. Okay, that's it. Thanks for watching. Good luck with your experiment.